one. Okay, so um, today we're going to look at uh, a game I played. It's an example game. I'm taking three stones from um, Crazy Stone. And uh, this should be a very easy win for me, but I'm very out of practice. Uh, and what we're really doing is looking at the thinking. How do we think through these things? And you'll notice most of my videos are just about how do we think. Okay, one thing George brought up, <clears throat> which I think is really good to look at, and so we're going to do that here. Okay. White, we're looking at the white group. And we want to notice that white is low and settled. So what does that mean? Well, let's imagine white playing here. I want to point out that this is absurd. White has no needs in this area. So we go one further. No, this, that's like you're helping the group. We don't need to help the group. So we want to play away from strength, and specifically when it's low and settled. Now we're going to change this a little bit, put it up on the fourth line. And now we want to notice that when black approaches, our skirt's open. If we don't do anything about that, he can come under, he can cut through. All these things are happening because we have an unfinished position. So fourth line, generally speaking, does not finish a group. And third line does finish a group. Next question is, how far away do we have to play before we're not too close? And the answer is the five line rule. And so let's put it here. There's five lines, and and this is, we don't want to get closer to this than this. Let's look at why. If we go further, black has room for an entire group inside. This being the case, we're not necessarily, necessarily associated with our group. So we can go further. That's all fine, but... If we want to make that area difficult for black, that's when we go five lines. Okay, now there isn't room for black to be comfortable in there. So we're specifically looking at the A, B stones, B being low and settled, finished. It's efficient. Black has a hard time. Let's bring it in one closer. Black still has a hard time. Well, if black has a hard time here and black has a hard time if we're one further away, then why are we closer? We're wasting energy. George, did that make sense? Yes. Great. Thank you. So if we play here, black has a hard time. If we play one further, black does not necessarily have a hard time. That's not a good or bad thing, but we don't want to get closer than here. And this is going to come up in the game, so I wanted to point it out on an empty board. George, good enough? You want, ready to go on? Yeah, that's great. I, I, I guess one way of looking at that is that if, if, you remo if by having that um, the five-space extension, you remove an option of health away from your opponent, then... I mean, that shows you that this rule makes sense, right? Because that's what it's doing. Yeah. So black, yeah, um, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Back to the game. Three stones against five done. Nice and basic. I go to settle. We've talked about that before. Settle the group, everyone's settling. Uh, Black has two choices here. <clears throat> A and B are both Jaseki. Uh, A is more of a growing move, putting less energy into eyes. 
B is a more settling move. And here, I'm too far away from my D4 to be growing. So I just played the more practical move. Okay. There's another principle I want to bring up here. So let's go back to this board. <clears throat> here we have a one black, one white situation. If white ignores, black gets, dare I say, 100% advantage, two to one. That's a pretty big advantage. I'm not saying white's bad. But black gets a big advantage. So let's do this now. Right? Black. Now if we play away, it's a three to two rather than a one to one. So white can more freely play away. Let's assume that made sense and we go back to the game here. So black can play away and everything's fine. But if I play again and white responds, playing away is easier, less, less traumatic. So I don't need to respond here. I could easily play the bigger move. That's a pretty big move because white has a wall, would like to approach, but playing an easy game here. I don't want to get in any trouble. Uh, we've talked about why this Jacecki is not used much anymore. George, should I explain that again here? No, I think I think that was quite clear with the three okay. three um, the San San Jacecki you, you talked about. So, let's check out if I respond. Notice that my A group very strong, my B group very strong and they're near each other it's like why am i really strong next to really strong it's wasting energy so not only do i prefer playing up here because of white's wall i don't need to respond for any reason and i might even be over concentrated if i do so anyway that's why i play away hopefully that made sense all right okay I've noticed AlphaGo playing A a lot in growing that corner. So I try to follow suit to learn what that means. Uh, there's a lot of possible moves here. Perhaps the best professional move is to dive in. But very complicated, lots of variations, very aggressive. Uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be aggressive in this game. If I kick, I've helped white. So now it's, white has a proper extension. I don't want to help white. So again, just stabilize. Let's compare black A and black B. They're pretty much the same kind of move here. If I play B, it's very much sente because C's gone too far, right? I can invade C next. So there's more of a need for Black to play B for his own health than Black to play A because it's already supported. So anyway, this makes a lot of sense to play this in this case. Again, I hope it makes sense. I guess another okay. way of helping, of helping that group um, indirectly would be playing around H, H3 to put pressure on the other group. Uh, yeah, so I could. That's a good point George is making. I could um, play this Jaseki, and uh, I am then supporting my O3. But I decided to play here. It's much more straightforward. And then we have a last big move. Oh, and then I play this. That's right. Check this out. If White plays here, he's got a solid group there. I feel inclined to do some defense and all of a sudden white's getting something for free. So that's why I decide to play here. Remember I could choose this Jaseki 
or I could choose to play away again and be fine there, or I could stop White's move in a Jaseki choice that favors me. I'm saying this a lot, but I hope that was clear. Okay. Boom, boom, we play a Jaseki out. All nice and easy. Okay. White settled. Now, I'm going to say that black settled, but let's clarify what that means. I have an A group, which is very out. I have a B group that's extremely safe. And C is not a group. D is not a group. I don't. They don't need help. They're not groups. Are they important stones? Not necessarily. They represent some area, but the bottom's kind of a small area. So this is a good time to head back to either play my double wing, which I like, or grow my center area, which I like. That can get big. I decided... There's no problems here. I want to keep things simple. I went ahead and played the worst of the three options. I'm just going to mark those options. We got our double wing. We got our growth in the center, which I kind of don't like because center is the hardest thing to take. So one, I think, is bigger than two. And my three is my B stone. My B group doesn't need it. My A group doesn't need it. That area is small, so it is the smallest of them all. Overall, it's a nice move, but really not necessary. And um, at a five and six down level, that's the kind of move that's just going to lose you the game. That comes in. One thing to realize here, if... Come on. If white cuts, I have white captured in a ladder. So there's no problems here. But this, I'm sorry, that was a net, not a ladder. But once white's here, the cut starts becoming a bit awkward. So I save the cut. Okay. We're in the habit of checking our groups. And we have an A and a B group here. My A group, if it gets cut, could have issues. Let's check out its options for health. We want it to have three. Option one, connect to the three stones on the bottom. Option two, run to the center. Only two options. I should be thinking about defending this group. Okay. And even though the cut doesn't work. Then why doesn't the cut work? Because of the ladder. Ladder works for white. Because white gets in this shape. Oh, okay. And that yeah. black stone's an Atari. Yes, yeah, I see. Yeah. And even if it did work for black, still, white's going to make some um, threatening ladder breaker, and then I have, I'd have want to defend on the right, and I want to defend my cut. So, yeah, even if it didn't work, I would be concerned. Okay. So I'm going to be defending my A group. Let's look at some options. Option one, A, continue to go to grow the bottom. Yeah, except the bottoms, that's not that big. It's third line, not thrilling. There is another option. If White's B group was weak, well, that's one of our options for health is white's weak. Uh, let's just remember that there's three possible options for our health. Option run, 
One, running away. Option two, life. If I can live in one move, that's a pretty good option for health. And the third option is bother him. If he's weak, he has no right to be attacking us. Okay. So if I make the white group weak, that defends my group. Well, something I'm concerned about here is this white move. He gets near life. It's points and points that I could have gotten. So it's points times two. And now that black group, I don't want to say it's sente for white, but I'm definitely feeling some pressure. So when I play this move, it may look slow, but check out, I'm getting the points instead of white. I'm declaring my health like if there's nothing white can do now. I'm very healthy. And now white has no right to be cutting my other group because he's so weak. So that's, I want to point out a common way we see this. I'm just setting up a hypothetical board. Okay. White attacks us. We need to defend our group. A common way is to defend it from a distance. It's not only a big area, and our Shamari loves extending, but now White can't do much attacking because he's so weak. So it's a, it's a, this helping from a distance is a commonplace. Okay, so that's what this is. Light gets out. Oh, now it's a good time to defend. Now it makes sense. Light comes out. <clears throat> and does that make me concerned about any of my bottom groups? No, light's far away. I'm very strong there. White can't do anything. That leads me to the last big area on the board. And we want to make sure we notice I've left room to descend. Let's go one further and see why that's important. If white picks a fight, oh, I can come down. Really? That's, that's nothing. So I give myself room in case white picks a fight. And it's good for the double wing. Okay. White comes in, and I gotta tell you, five dons aren't weak. And many times in this game, I felt fear, and I didn't know, you know, I don't want to be embarrassed by losing. I don't know about you guys, but these things plague me when I play Go. You know, my ego gets involved, and my lack of, like, my, my weak plays get, that's like, so it's an emotional adventure for me when I play Go. I have a feeling it is for a lot of people, but it sure is for me. So I could like, okay, we'll just, we'll have a running battle. Well, White's got more stones in the center. And when I pick this battle, all of a sudden the 3-3 three, three gets open, the invasions come up. It's like, I would hate to pick a fight here. <clears throat> Uh, so I decide to just make a wall for my little center and let him do what he needs to do. I had planned on playing this out, but I decided that I didn't like my cuts and I didn't like giving the corner away. So I take the corner instead, which gives him a little bit more on the side, but I get Sente. And I get to drop down. I get a very nice position. Check out. I didn't get area one, but that wasn't mine anyway. White did get area one. Worth about 10. But I picked up 10 in area two anyway. And sent it. So not a loss. We um, continue. Not, before you go on. Yep. Could you go back to that previous variation? I think it's the previous one in the in the game tree. 
This uh, one? No, sorry, sorry, the, the, the one before, the one before that. This one? Uh, yeah, so so here as black, I think a lot of Q players, they, they tend to like to play the diagonal move in order to prevent, sorry, sorry, as white, playing the diagonal move to prevent bl black from connecting under. Um, I see. To stop white from, I got you here, connecting under. Exactly, yeah. So a lot of Q players, they just they play the Kasumi in order to prevent that. But I guess right. but often in in higher uh, level players' games, you, you see them willing, you know, them willing their opponent to connect underneath. Right. Um, so if I jump out, we say white can connect under. It's more like white can connect under or connect through. Yeah. Yeah. I can cut through this way. And uh, black needs to do some sort of giving a brief variation. Yeah. So to stop that, if white plays here, then that stone's dead, white didn't connect under, yeah. Uh, this is not a terrible variation. White will live in the corner. Uh, black wants to make sure he connects. This is not a terrible idea. A little thicker. Yeah, so this is possible. But I just felt that this was a little more straightforward for me. I, I don't know which variation is better. They both seem reasonable. But this one, getting Sente here and getting as many points as White did felt really good. Yeah. White comes out. White's, White's not alive, so White's going for life here. And uh, I had to double, a double check, make sure this wasn't Sente to hurt me, and indeed it's not Sente. He has two liberties, I have three, so there's no problems. And <clears throat> what to do with my sente? I decided if I'm gonna go to the trouble of building a wall here, I may as well use it. So I went ahead and played a, oh, I did this instead. That's right. I thought that I had played this, but White has this weak group that I can use, the weak A group. And I can build my area in Sente. And that comes before a Gote center. And wouldn't that previous move, wouldn't that be trying to make points from, influ from influence? Uh, true, but if it's the biggest, you know, for like yeah. entering in game, then this would come first, yeah. Sure, yeah. Now, check out the trouble I might be making for myself. This offers White to make a fight. And I've got to tell you, I was really concerned about this. Uh, so I, to me, when I'm deciding on moves, I have to have something to weigh. So I'm, you know, what, what's going on? What, what makes me want this move, not want this move? And I decided the thing that makes me avoid this is the fear of the fight. So I went from that perspective and I realized everything about the situation, black is strong and white's weak. So the, I just got to get rid of the fear and play it. So I did. And, the, and as long as I don't get off in my fear, I should be able to handle the fight easily. But if white, if white is weak, should we try, should we be trying not to contact that stone? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Uh, I want to talk about that. Uh, we're on 63, so I can get back to it. Okay. We've all know the rule. Don't touch weak stones. Why? Because the weak stone gets a big advantage. 100% uh, advantage over black. 
So what happened? White got stronger. So don't touch weak stones because they get stronger. I would say that this is a strong stone for white now. If I touch it, this white stone gets stronger. Well, that's a waste of time. It was already strong. So we, the sister proverb is do touch strong stones. Okay. What about strong groups? So groups and stones are different. What was I on? 60 something? There we are. So those two, the, the two A stones, the group is weak, but the two stones are strong. So I'm not helping the two stones because they're, I am helping them. They're already strong. The group, do I want to attack the whole group? No. He has so much space, he could ignore me and do okay. There's just tons of space all over the place. So I'm not here to attack the group. I'm here to develop the bottom in sente. And it does. So let's change that. I'm going to move the A stone one to the left. Uh, that's good job, George. I'm no longer going to play this move. Helps him too much. Yeah. I'm going to. Uh, what would I do instead? I think I might start thinking about splitting through and try to cut him. Yeah. I really would completely change my move. Good good uh, call, George. Yeah. Interesting. I hadn't even thought of that. So I'll come through here. He says, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Defend myself. Jump out to A. I read out the cuts. So many black stones there. No problems. Now I wanted to do some defense. Defend the, this area, this area, and this big gap. So when I play here, fixes all three. Well, clearly well enough. So I was happy with that move. He plays an in-game move. Are we an in-game? I think there's one more move before in game. Let's define in game a little bit. <clears throat> Who owns area one? Black does. How much is black going to get in area one? Well, that's kind of up for, for grabs. Black can grow it, white can lessen it. So we don't know the actual limits of the area, but we do know it's Black's area. Who owns this area one? No one yet. Who owns area two? We don't know yet. Who owns area three? Well, that's Black's. But area two, Black has not encircled that yet. So there's two areas that are still middle game. So I think White's move here, as big as it is, uh, might be too early. So I go ahead and take mine. There's other ways of doing it. I could get uh, aggressive here and do a lot more, but I'm I just do, taking it very simple and straightforward. That gives him in-game. I get Sente. Big in game. George, do you think this move is worth counting for the uh, yeah, watchers? Sure. Yeah, why not? Okay. Uh, a lot of Q players don't know how to count how big a move is. Okay. So we start with what black gains. <clears throat> if black does nothing, So what does black actually have? If black wants those points, he needs to play here. Okay. So black does not have 
yet. Any of these, that's for sure. Let's go back to here. So black does not have these points. If black plays here, he has created at least two, perhaps three, depending. If white responds, then he gets a mincente. So let's call it two points, two and a half. So between two and three points, somewhere in there. If white plays it, white gains all of this. Now you'll notice in a minute that, that I've got a monkey jump. Monkey jump goes to here, so it's this. White's going to gain this many if white plays it. So two, four, six, eight, nine for white, three for black, nine and three, 12. But it's double sente. Black gets it or white gets it. So it's really quite large. So if something's five points in double gote, it's incredibly small. Five points in double sente, incredibly large. So this is eight-ish in near double sente. So that was a bit complex, but hopefully it made some sense. Uh, this worried me a little bit because I knew I had a lot of cuts. So it's like, here comes my proof. Did I, did I do it correctly? And I had to do a little reading, make sure, does this kill? Yes, it kills. What makes me think that? Well, white has two liberties. I clearly have more than two liberties. So it is clear. That doesn't mean it wasn't fearful. And now we see, assuming white saves his stone, now it's, I need to respond, but I lived. And here, the computer realizes he's well behind. Uh, and that's when computers do that, they, okay, I need to play crazy. So from here, white starts playing poorly. So we'll stop here. But, um, you know, white's trying to win a battle that he can't win. So we'll call it quits there. Uh, the last interesting piece is... Um, <clears throat> a stone in the corner is worth about eight points. Some say nine, eight, most, I say eight. So at this point of the game, I should be three times eight, 24 points ahead. I win the game by 25 points. If I could have done a little better in end game. Um, so I lost very little with my passive moves, with my extra strong moves. I didn't have to be aggressive to maintain. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, George, for your questions. And we'll see you all next time.